So guys, the plan is to show you the orthopedic instrument set. Let's go for unpacking of the orthopedic instrument set. Okay, so so many videos about unboxing of Apple, iPhone and so on. And here it is the orthopedic drum set. Let's open it. So what all we have, the first thing, the smallest of the thing, I can just take out one by one. Okay, so I have got four small wires like these. All of you can see that. So these are four wires, very, very thin. You can see these are what you call the stainless steel wires. Although there is a PPT that I have discussed with you all in this app, the 2.0. But this is something I found that we should interact basically actually by the means of these. So these are what you call the stainless steel wires. Okay. So where we are using these stainless steel wires, these are used whenever you are doing the tension band wiring. Remember that the medial malleolus, patella and olecranon and so on. So for tensioning of the bones, when you want to create a you know boundary around the particular bone, we can use it. So these are four stainless steel wires. The difference is the width, the thickness. Okay. So as per the site, as per the bone, as per the age of the patient, we can use accordingly. That is one. Okay. So second I have with me is this, you know, round structure, round vault, which is having some wires. And what are these wires? Let me just take them out. Okay. So I've got multiple wires in these. Right. So, so many things to discuss from this small round box. Okay. So this one, the first one that you see, can you identify this? This is what you call a K wire. Isn't it? Two pointed edges, both the ends are very, very sharp. And why we are using it? We have just seen the discussion on the CM. So close reduction and internal fixation. See a shoot under the CM onto these two monitors and then fix this directly into the skin. That is why these are made very, very sharp. Okay. So two ends. So you can use from any of the end, right? Now, when you are putting these K wires into the bone, understand this, these are of variable thickness. You can see this 0.5 and 3 mm, lot of difference in the thickness. So when you put one of the K wires inside the bone, the other end is there, which can hit you, which can harm you. So what we have for that, for that we have got one of the instrument known as this, the plier. Okay. So what is the role of this plier? The plier is the other end of the K wire. You can pass it through this, the hole and you can bend it. That is one. So you can bend the K wire. Number two, you can just, you know, put this wire into this area. There is a slot over here. If you can just see, so there is a slot and you can just cut it. So you can cut the K wire and you can you can just mold the K wire. You can just, you know, bend it where, on whichever side you want. So this is what you call a plier. Okay. That's what you call a plier, which can be used to cut or to bend the K wires, right? So plier, K wire. Okay. So we have got the plier and K wires. Now in this box only, I have got two other, you know, pins also. Now see this, these are slightly bigger. And what is the difference? The difference is that these are pointed only in one side, only on one side. Other side, it is blunt. It is like something you can put a cork or something like this. So why it is used? What is this? This is what you call a Stinman pin. And why we are using it? We have discussed this Stinman pin in the section of the tractions. So whenever you want to give a bony traction, skeletal traction, you can pass this through a bone. For example, you can pass this through and through to a tibia and you can put the weight on both the sides, right? Similar to the Stinman pin, which is used for skeletal traction, we have got another pin which is known as denims. What is the difference in these two? Can you identify? The only difference is both are same, sharp at this end, blunt at this end. Only difference is that denims has got threads. So why these threads are there? So that you can put this one in an osteoporotic bone. Because if you put this in osteoporotic bone, what will happen? The bones are already weak. So there is a high chance it can slip out, come out from this way or that way. But being this denims, because of these serrations, it will stick and bound to the osteoporotic bones very tightly. Okay. So denims and Stinman spin, right? So these are denims, Stinman's and different sizes of K wires. Okay. Plier I have already shown you. Now, next I have in this box is something like this. This is wire cutter. So this can be used for cutting of the wires like this. See this wire, hold it and cut it. So this is a cutter basically. Okay, the bone cutter, the wire cutter, we can use it for cutting multiple things. So this is a cutter. Okay, that is a cutter. You can all just see that margins are very, very sharp over here. Right, that is a cutter. Next one I have is, okay, okay, so I have got these two clamps. I have got these two clamps. What these clamps are for? What these clamps are for? 
these clamps are to hold the parts of the bones right reduction clamps these are known as reduction clamps when two parts of the bones they are like this so you have given a traction you have put them in one position and then you can use these clamps to hold them okay so clamps to hold the bones in position this one i have is what you call lomans patellar holding forcep all of you can easily recognize it images given in maheshwari images given in my book also so what we do this will keep a hold on the upper fragment of the patella this will keep a hold on the lower pole of patella so you can just open it as much as you want and then putting the two ends of patella upper and lower end into this you can just tighten it so when you tighten it these two ends will move towards each other so that a compression is achieved in between whole of the all the parts of the patella and then you can do the tension band wiring k wiring everything whatever you want okay so lomans patellar holding clamps that is lomans okay so next i have okay this is another ss wire next i have is some structure like this all of you can easily identify crocodile mouth what is that this is what you call the bone gouge right the bone basically nibbler right so next one i have found out is something like this the crocodile mouth what exactly it is used for to hold the pieces of bone and just clean them out this is what you call a bone nibbler so this is a dual action bone nibbler you can see one action here and one action being taken here so this is like crocodile mouth and if you see the slots can you see the slots here so these slots are so that you can just hold the piece of the bone the fragments of the bone and you can hold them and nibble them out so this is what you call a bone nibbler that's a bone nibbler okay uh, another thing i have in my ortho set are these two what are these key like structures these are what you call plate benders so if you want to bend a plate sometime it may happen let's suppose you are doing the both bone forearm plating and the plate is not setting according to the contour of the bone so you can use these two to bend the plate okay so plate bender to bend the plate as per the contour of the bone right next i have in my set okay another what is this i have just shown you this the nibbler again a bone nibbler so a small size bone nibbler a small size plate bender okay and then we have got these important structures what are these what is this scoop ice cream scoop so this is what you call a bone scoop right to take out the graft from inside the bone whenever you want to take a small graft like from femoral condyles iliac crest put it inside and take a scoop of your ice cream so bone scoop to take the bone graft small pieces of the bone curate basically right the bone curettage whenever you are doing the curettage of the bone for grafting purpose so you can use this that is bone curate okay another one in my hand is this what is this this is something similar that is something similar to another instrument which is like this now you see the edges of both of them are same so size is different skip that part the size is different but these two see the edges are same what is the difference the difference is this is a periosteum elevator this one is a chisel what is the difference difference is periosteum elevators will always have a serration like this to keep the thumb this is what you call a thumb rest put on the bone and scrape the periosteum right that is periosteum elevator this is a chisel right what is the basic difference between the chisel and the next one the osteotome now see the edges you can see that from the camera side can you uh, just see that see that from the side so in the osteotome what will happen both the margins they are meeting at a point they are sharp edges like this in the cases of chisel you can see that in chisel one of the edges beveled one of the edges sharp right beveled and sharp edge that is the difference between the osteotome and the chisel and what is the basic difference with the periosteum elevator i have told you periosteum elevator will always have a thumb rest like this otherwise it will be difficult to differentiate between the chisel and the periosteum the thumb rest helps you out all this okay these are three then what i have next is a t handle okay so i have next is a t handle and this t handle is having a key like this so why we use the t handle i try to explain in my classes but often you know you don't ask because of hesitation and all so see whenever you want to put a k wire or a uh, this uh, pin into the bone what you can do this is a small you know uh, pin so i put this pin here okay i'll put this pin here and i'll tighten it by the key 
So I just put the pin and I tighten it by the key. So tightening done and now I can put this pin directly onto the into the bone. That is the purpose of T-handle. Whenever you don't have an electric drill, which I'm just going to show you. So electric drill, whenever you don't have electric drill, you can use this T-handle. Okay. So T-handle can be used for manual insertion of wires or you can take the K wires like this. So put the K wires inside, tighten it here by this key and you can just push it manually inside the bone. That is the T-handle with the key. Okay. So next, what else I have? I have is this. What is this? This is depth gauge. So whenever you are making a hole inside the bone, whenever we are making a hole inside the bone, after making a hole, putting the plate, I should know what length of screw am I going to use. So to measure the length of that hole, I am going to use this depth gauge. Okay. This is the part which will go inside the hole. And here on this part, I have got the markings, readings. Let's suppose this much part has gone into the bone. So how much is the length of my screw is demarcated here at this point. So right now it is almost 28. Okay. It is coming on to 28. So I'll put a 28 size screw into the bone. Okay. That is for this one. Depth gauge. Okay. What else I have? I have this screwdriver for you. All of you can easily recognize putting the into the screw and just, you know, tightening it or loosening it or removing it as simple as that. So that's a screwdriver. Okay. So these are simple orthopedic drum instrumentation set and then I have got something for you uh, the retractors I must show you the retractors also because retractors are a part of your MCQs which you can say from the gynae side or from the surgical side maybe from the ortho side sometimes so I can show you the retractors also okay let me open that so retractors okay these four I hope you can easily recognize not my orthopedic one but for the gynae purpose Divers, so these are all divers, not my part. Okay, so uh, okay, this one, the broad blade. Can you see this? The broad blade. This is what you call Morris retractor. I have opened my hospital set, which has been uh, prepared for a general surgery case, basically, or for the gynae case all the time. So my retractor set is Langenbeck, basically, uh, the small ones. But this one is what you call a Morris, right? How, what is the basic difference between a Morris and a Langenbeck retractor? That Morris will have a broad blade. Okay. The blade size is broad. It is used for basically abdominal surgeries in uh, general surgery or the gynecology or obstetric procedures. Okay. That is Morris. It has been an MCQ of your exam just two years back from now. So somewhere I remember 17 or 18, uh, 2017 or 18, we had this question, the Morris in All India exam. Okay. That is Morris retractor. And this one is a self retaining retractor, obviously. This one is a self retaining retractor. We can fix it here. We can fix it here and we can just, you know, make it to lie at a particular position like this. So we can give the soft tissue retraction as much as we want like this. And these two will keep on retracting the soft tissue. So self retaining retractor. We have got Morris retractor. We have got these are gynae part, not mine. Devers one and the Langenbeck and uh, uh, the retractor which we use and the Zerni retractor, Langenbeck and Zerni, which I have already shown to you in your uh, PPT. So Langenbeck, Zerni, they are uh, gone into my autoclave area. So I don't have them right now. So Langenbeck, Zerni, the other two retractors. So these are all from the retractor side. Okay. Uh, let me just show you one last electric drill also. I have shown you the T handle electric drill. So this is, I have shown you the T handle. Okay, let me show you the electric drill also and how it works. So most of the time in our ortho OT, we are using the electric drills. Okay, the purpose is same that electric drills don't take much of the effort like uh, these two. So this is my box of the electric drill. I open that. Okay, and I'll just take it out. So yes, this one. This is my electric drill. Okay, battery operated. You can just put one wire over here. This is one K wire. So I'm just putting the K wire over here. I'll just tighten it. I'll just tighten it. Okay. And then looking at image under the C arm, I'll just pass it into the bone. It is working. Fine. That's an electric drill. So uh, that was a very small visit to your ortho OT. So I guess that these two, three small things are more than enough to understand most of the procedures that we are doing in orthopedic OT. And this is our biggest, you know, power, the C arm machine because of which we are able to do majority of the procedures in a close way. This gives us an idea where the bone is, where the fracture is and where our 
implant is getting inside it. Okay, so tourniquet, CM, unboxing of the orthopedic instrument set, some of the uh, these uh, what you call the retractor systems. So I guess that is more than enough. And still, if you want something more from it, from the orthopedic part, do let me know, and we can explore the orthopedic OT a bit more and the procedures a bit more. Thank you so much.